What's up, college football fans? Got a lot of stuff to dive into on today's show, but I want to ask you, if you want more college football videos, that is up to you. If you do want them, like this video. If you don't, I guess don't hit the like button, but I would like to do more college football videos and the rest of Chat Sports would as well. That's your call. Hit that like button. Let's get over 300 likes on today's show. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Welcome into College Football Now by Chat Sports. We've got some college football news and rumors to get into with week three of the season upon us. A couple of games tonight, and then, of course, the Saturday slate tomorrow. Coming up here in a little bit, Nebraska head coaching betting odds have dropped. Has a favorite emerged to replace Scott Frost and Lincoln? Stay tuned. We'll get you caught up on the latest on the Nebraska coaching search. But first, let's start with Texas A&M down in College Station, reports leaking last night and really confirming this morning, Haynes King benched by Jimbo Fisher. He is making a quarterback change for Texas A&M. He's going to go to Max Johnson. We'll look at Johnson in a sec. But when you look at what Haynes King has done last week against App State, this is just not going to cut it, guys. 13 of 20, 97 yards, no touchdowns. He actually fumbled twice. Both were recovered by A&M, luckily, uh, but they still lost the game. QBR of 21.3, just not good enough, and he hasn't been nearly good enough when he has gotten to play. Started the first two games last year, then got injured, missed the rest of the season. A lot of hype uh, around this kid over the last couple of years as a former four-star out of Longview. Six touchdowns, six picks, and four starts. It just isn't that impressive. Jimbo had to make a change here. Max Johnson transferred to Texas A&M for a reason, and Haynes King did nothing to help himself on this front. When you lose to App State, there's going to be changes uh, in one way, shape, or form. And for Jimbo Fisher, that's by swapping out quarterbacks. Should Jimbo be on the hot seat? I want to ask you guys this question. I've seen a little bit of this out there circulating on the Internet after losing to App State. Should should he be on the hot seat? He's making a lot of money. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Let us know in the comments. Now, the answer for me is no, but what I will say is Jimbo has already gotten a couple of big raises, and that's after getting a $75 million contract to begin with. He's paid to win big at AM, as in compete for SEC championships and eventually national championships. He's not paid to lose to App State. I'll tell you that right now. Now, that doesn't put him on the hot seat. App State's a good program. Uh, it's a bad loss for AM, there's no doubt. They should not lose to App State at home, but this isn't a loss that's going to bury your tenure by any means. But at the end of the day, Jimbo's got to start winning these type of games. You can't be losing to App State. So he turns to Mac jo Max Johnson here, who transfers in from uh, LSU. Played fairly well last year. It was a lost season for the Tigers. We know what happened with that Orgeron, that whole mess. But good touchdown to interception ratio, 27 to 6. He's got experience. He's a veteran. Couple of years of eligibility here. Uh, I like this move for Jimbo. Now, I don't think Max Johnson all of a sudden makes – a&M SEC West contenders this year. I think for them to compete to win the SEC West, that was going to be Haynes King living up to his potential. Now, that doesn't appear to be the case, at least right now, which is why they're making the switch. But this is a talented enough football team on defense and at the skill positions that if Max Johnson just plays well, they can compete in football games. And he better play well quickly because this schedule is absolutely ramping up. They got a home game against top 15 Miami this Saturday. That's a tricky battle uh, coming up here. Arkansas next week at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Uh, they look pretty good. Then you go to Mississippi State. All of a sudden, you could be one and three for that game. That's a tough one. And then at Alabama, the Jimbo Saban matchup. This is ramping up for A&M, guys. Like, they better win this Saturday against Miami, and Max Johnson better be the, the solution here because if not, while Jimbo's not on the hot seat now, it is not completely impossible that this could be a five- or six-loss team this year. They better kick it into gear down in College Station. All right, before we get into the Nebraska coaching latest, BetUS is your sportsbook home all season long for the NFL and college football. You want to bet on games, BetUS is the place to do it. Get started today at chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code chat125. Got to use our link to sign up to get that promo code and that 125% deposit bonus. Here are my picks of the week. Leave the laugh track at home. Yes, Nebraska plus 11 at home. I like it. Oklahoma has looked a little shaky. Dylan Gabriel, I don't know. Brent Venable's third game on the road. I think Nebraska plays inspired. I think they cover. 
Don't be shocked if they might just steal this one. BYU plus three and a half at Oregon. The Ducks looked horrible in week one against Georgia. BYU coming off a nice one against Baylor. I like BYU here. Penn State, Auburn over 48. I think these offenses can score enough. I like the over there. Texas Tech getting 10 at NC State. NC State almost lost to East Carolina a couple weeks ago. Give me the Red Raiders to cover. And then I like the over between Mississippi State and LSU. A couple of good quarterbacks in that game, Jaden Daniels and Will Rogers. I think the over hits. And, hey, it's a Mike Leach game. Bet the over. All right. Nebraska. They fired Scott Frost just under a week ago. Obviously, the coaching search is, you know, probably starting to form in Lincoln. And betting odds from Vegas have emerged. Who could replace Scott Frost in Lincoln? We'll kind of go one by one here, a little rapid fire at you. All right. The betting favorite, Matt Campbell, the Iowa State head coach. He finally beat his rival, uh, Iowa, this past weekend in maybe the ugliest college football game of the season. Got it done. You look at Campbell's tenure at Iowa State. Has he maxed out? I mean, they won a Fiesta Bowl a couple years ago. Ten games above 500 in Ames is a job well done. He's done a nice job there. Is he really going to compete for Big 12 championships year in and year out? It could be time for Matt Campbell to make the jump. And, hey, Matt Campbell is kind of the, the opposite of Scott Frost, who's this young, innovative offensive guy. Campbell's more of an old-school, tough uh, type of coach. I think that uh, that could be a culture fit for what they need in Lincoln. How about Lance Leipold? Listen, uh, I don't know if Nebraska admins could sell it to boosters to hire the Kansas football coach. But I'll tell you what, Leipold in a season and change has made Kansas look competent, something that the last, what, five coaches haven't been able to do in Lawrence, really no one since Mark Mangino. Uh, I'm curious to see how this Kansas season plays out. They're one of the top offenses in the country early on. They beat West Virginia on the road. That's a nice win for them. If he goes bowling with Kansas this year, which is still a long way to go, that's pretty impressive in year two for Leipold. I don't know if I'd go this route. He is 58 years old, but the fact that he's even in the mix here, he's already being asked about it at his press conferences, that means he's doing a nice job in Lawrence so far. Now fill in the blank for me. Nebraska will hire blank as its next head football coach. Let us know in the comments. Nebraska will hire blank as its next leader of the football program. All right, number three in the betting odds, Mickey Joseph, the interim head coach, who is a Nebraska guy, played there, but... So was Scott Frost. That obviously did not work out. Hey, you want the job? Go in the Big Ten West. I mean, seriously, the Big Ten West is not very good this year. Now Nebraska's in a hole. They lost to Northwestern week one, but um, the Big Ten West is not good. Minnesota's not great. Wisconsin lost to Washington State last week. Iowa looks bad terrible offensively it's not like the west is uh you know got ohio state and michigan in there like it's winnable you want the job go win the big 10 west otherwise i think you got to go external here if you're nebraska all right number four mark stoops plus 700 odds as well look i think if he wanted the job he could probably get it it sounds crazy but he's got it rolling in lexington that's a cushy job for him. They will never fire him unless things just fall off the wagons there. What he's doing there, he's winning like eight, nine games a year now. He's got him in the top ten for the first time since 2007. Unless the brass is going to offer $8 million a year. If I'm Mark Stoops, I'm just chilling. I parlay this into another raise because, hey, he's living a comfy life at Kentucky. All right, Luke Fickle, plus 900. I mean, he'd probably be at the top of my list if I was Nebraska in terms of who I'd try to get. But I understand the betting odds having him fifth best because, quite frankly, I don't think Fickle takes this job, okay? He's been linked to better jobs, and he's hung out at Cincinnati. They're going into the Big 12 in the next couple years, a Power 5 conference. That has bought him time to be more patient uh, to take the job that he wants. So I don't think he takes the Nebraska job. I really don't. I think he stays put for now. All right, we got five more candidates to look at based on the latest betting odds. But if you want the latest college football coverage, we've got you covered. News, rumors, coaching hot boards. Ah, Notre Dame loses a couple more games. They could uh, pull the plug on Marcus Freeman early. We might have a Notre Dame coaching board soon. Hit that sub button. We're going to have you covered with multiple videos per week throughout the college football season. All right, 6 through 10, the Saban School. Has Bill O'Brien fixed the image enough? Honestly, I don't know. That offense, you know, for having Bryce Young has kind of been underwhelming at times. Uh, the last, uh, I'll say, five or six games uh, at Alabama came out firing last year, a little underwhelming down the stretch. Uh, and then Texas, that was a poor performance for Bama. I need to see more from Bill O'Brien, if I'm being honest. Number seven, Urban Meyer, uh, Fox Sports analyst, former Ohio State head coach. 
don't be this desperate. You just don't have to be this desperate. You're Nebraska. You're not, you know, I don't even know. It. Yeah, you're not Kansas, and you're like, we'll do anything to win. I get it's been bad at Nebraska, but you were winning nine games a year five, six years ago with Bob Pelini. Like, it, it, it's not impossible to get back to that level. I don't even know if Urban wants to coach. Like, I, I just think he's done. Don't go get Urban Meyer. But would you hire him? Clearly, I wouldn't. Type H for hire, type P for pass. I don't think he's worth the trouble. I know the NFL is a different beast, but what went down in Jacksonville is just so embarrassing. I just – I would not touch this guy at this point in his career. All right, uh, a couple more here. Matt Rule, plus 1,500. I'm surprised the odds are a little low. Maybe – Vegas is saying, ah, he may not get fired after all in Carolina. They lost week one, but they were close. Uh, keep an eye on this. I think that uh, he's someone um, uh, that I would be very interested in if, A, he gets fired, or, B, he just wants to return to the college game. Uh, Nick Saban style, maybe did this NFL experiment, doesn't like it. You look at what he's done in his uh, head coaching career – Sure, the records don't pop off, but Temple was winning two games a year when he took that job, turned them around a couple of 10-win seasons. Baylor, uh, his first year went 1-11 and because he took over after the Art Bryles mess. By his last year, he won 11 games and almost won a Big 12 championship. And then Carolina hasn't looked great, 10-23. and That's kind of what I'm talking about. Maybe he's more of a college coach. Uh, if that doesn't work out, I think he could be a top candidate here for Nebraska. Speaking of Baylor, Matt Rule's replacement, Dave Aranda, plus 2,000. He didn't want the USC job. He's taking the Nebraska job? I don't think so. All right, Jim Leonard, defensive coordinator for Wisconsin. I don't mind this type of, you know, move as a secondary target. Maybe you go with more of a defensive, tough-minded coach. That's kind of the Big Ten, right? I, I, you know, unless you're Ohio State and you're having four, three guys at uh, wide receiver, you got to play defense and you got to stop teams. Nebraska hasn't been able to do it, uh, and you just hired the innovative young offensive guy, in Scott Frost, and look where that got you. So maybe a defensive-minded uh, uh, guy could be the way to go. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, and we'll continue to have you covered on this coaching search as it goes along. Remember, like this video if you want more college football coverage. Hit that thumbs up icon. I'm Harrison Graham. We'll see you next time here on College Football Now.